I'm sure you're all aware of what happened with JonTron and PewDiePie. JonTron is his voice acting role being removed from the video game ukulele because the developers have different opinions to them. This in turn has caused lots of people to ask for refunds for this game. JonTron handled this with a champ, respecting the developers for giving him a chance to play a role in the game. Meanwhile, the developers tweeted this. The creature in the tweet being the one that JonTron voiced. I mean, <laughs> wow. That looks more like a temper tantrum to me. I'm just gonna put the tweets right next to each other just to show how unprofessional some of these people can be. So the JonTron controversy has been brought up to light. If you want more details, I made videos on it so you can check them out. PewDiePie, well, everybody has heard about what happened to PewDiePie. If you haven't, well, Sargon made two great videos covering the subject, link in the description. Now with the two backstories out of the way, let's get into today's article. A plea to YouTubers and streamers, remember who you are. Well, I know who I am. I am Appaben. I am a YouTuber who uses a cartoon avatar and people complain. And I'm also a YouTuber who goes on live action and people complain. Kids love you. Kids look up to you. You can influence them positively or wreck them emotionally. Really? I am not quite sure. Looking at my demographics, I am being viewed by people who are mostly older than me. For the record, I am 19, which means I'm just right here. And this is why my subscribers are my senpais, apparently. The article goes on to sum up the JonTron and PewDiePie controversy, which I already did. Let's get to the important parts. JonTron's rants and PewDiePie's exploitations are gross in any context, but a couple of weeks ago, I learned my 8-year-old niece is getting big into Minecraft, Roblox, Five Nights at Freddy's, and by extension, she's watching a lot of YouTubers stream those games. Ah, alright, so... Have you ever actually asked on what your 8-year-old child thinks about the controversy? Because I did ask my brother on his opinions about the PewDiePie and the Wall Street Journal controversy. My brother just so happens to be a huge fan of PewDiePie and he happens to also hear the news about the joke. You can watch that video in the description. And what, what, do, you, what do you think about that death to old juice thing? Just the, the, the first time I watched the video, I was like, Whoa, whoa, he, he, in me, uh, like, I, I can't believe he actually did that. But still, in my mind, it's fine. It's just, it's just a joke. The funny thing is, YouTube decided that that video is not advertiser-friendly. That's right, a video which consists of nothing but me interviewing my 13-year-old brother about his opinions on the PewDiePie controversy. That is not advertiser-friendly. Are you trying to hide something, YouTube, or is this your programmers being really damn dumb? Maybe finally once you can figure out that you cannot use objective-based calculators to calculate subjective matters. If this image was a part of an art show, the art show would be called... <sighs> Those are articles from Kotaku, as if they're the most reliable website in the room. So how long does she have until she hears her first oven joke during the stream, or receives her first dose of hilarious comedy via some remark about dead or gas juice? How is an 8-year-old supposed to understand that a 25-plus-year-old YouTuber, an adult, a person she's supposed to look up to and respect is... Just kidding, when she used the death and suffering of her direct ancestors as a casual remark meant to get a smattering of laughter during the slow parts of a Minecraft stream. You know, when me and my brother were discussing about the whole PewDiePie controversy, I came to an epiphany. And again, these are supposed to be the adults. <laughs> these are supposed to be the adults. These yeah, are supposed the to be the adults. Like, not, I have, I have yet to hear any of the younger bros actually say i am offended by yeah, that it yeah. was always the adults the adults were the, the younger bros well uh, okay fine like yeah, we don't care at at best they don't care at worst they don't understand <laughs> <laughs> they aren't reports of kids actually going hey hitler did nothing wrong or something like that and if you're worried that kids will be imitating PewDiePie, just keep in mind that his hitler nazi jokes are not the majority of his content he mostly just play video games and have fun also, for the love of God, parent your children. Are you seriously gonna police jokes that these people make just because children are involved? Have you ever actually asked these children on the kinds of jokes that they're hearing from these streamers? Has she ever shouted Deus Volt or Sieg Heil or Praise Kek? Where are our parents? Why aren't she educated in these things? Instead of crying about how streamers are creating problematic content, why not parent your children in avoiding problematic content? It's almost like the role of parents are lost in these people. My concern isn't unique, obviously. Prominent YouTubers and game streamers fall back on off-color remarks and racial stereotypes all the time. It's a very easy way to keep the attention of a pre-teen viewer base that's very big on bucking authority. 
whether they do so by giggling at jokes about farts and poop, or grinning open mouthed at the scandalous suggestion that Hitler did nothing wrong. Sadly, these poisonous jokes and opinions are already affect young viewers caught in the blast radius. Citing NeoGAF. <sighs> Let's read on the NeoGAF post. It's gonna be cancerous, but... Why or oh, why would you cite NeoGAF as your... Uh, anyway, let's read it. I have a teen cousin who loves YouTube, but mostly loves JonTron to death. She started to share her love for JonTron with her friends in school. She has a kind of innocent fan club in her class. I'm pretty sure that her humor and taste in games were molded by this guy, specifically because she loves retro games. She's 15 now, and her English is pretty advanced for her age. I learned English thanks to video games on the SNES era, and I never had a proper English class at school, as you can see, so I feel kind of identified with her. But then, everything changed when evil Jontron attacked! Today, she came to my house and started to talk about the racist stuff. She shares her love of video games with me because I am the nerd of the family and her parents aren't very involved in her hobby, honestly. She saw the Destiny debate and she didn't understand too much about what they were talking about. There are some English words that she still doesn't understand well. But she was shocked because she understand that John was talking about ugly stuff and people in the Destiny chat were mocking him. I started to explain to her about the situation. It was hard. She of course understands what racism is and all that, but she was not ready for hear JonTron talk shit about race and white supremacy. She started to cry. She cried. A lot. Why doesn't he like people different to him? Why he hates people from his own country? Why he hates black people? Wow. I, I mean, wow, you, you are paranoid. Just what I expect from Neo Gaff. Do you seriously believe that JonTron hates people that are different than him? Do you seriously believe that he hates people from his own country? And most importantly, do you seriously believe that he actually hates black people? I, ugh, Jesus Christ. Here's a picture to picture comparison of what JonTron said and what an actual racist Manfear Air said. Manfear Air is no longer working at Bioware, but... By the time he works at Bioware, he gets support from his peers. JonTron gets backlash. I disagree with what JonTron said, but the double standards is insanely staggering with these. JonTron gets booted off of the game, but Manfear Air gets support at the time? Now here's the key difference between JonTron and PewDiePie. JonTron has not made any of his videos about the political stuff on his channel, which is good. It's good that he keeps that on gaming stuff. Most of the people subscribe to him for his gaming stuff, and most of his fans aren't gonna care about the things that are happening around him. That is until the mainstream media and everybody makes a huge fuss on JonTron appearing on Sargon's stream. That is until he debated with Destiny and the mainstream media made a huge fuss about him again. Yes, he said things that can be wrong or can be interpreted as racist. Even he admitted it on his video. You know, any of the things in the stream that could be considered weird sounding or off-putting, I, I probably agree with you that they were. So I, I hope you don't read too much into it. But to think that he actually is a racist person who hates on black people and the Jews is way above the paranoia feel, guys. On the other hand, when people say that PewDiePie's Nazi jokes can influence children, that is more believable because PewDiePie puts on those jokes on his main videos on his channel. Even so, they're still jokes. Again, only the adults complain about how the jokes are offensive and not the actual children or actual PewDiePie fans because they either don't understand or they don't care or they actually think that they're just jokes. If you think that PewDiePie is actually an anti-Semite, racist Nazi who hates on black people, the problem isn't PewDiePie. The problem is you for being a paranoid lunatic. So when posts like this shows up on our conspiracy, I have an 11 year old son. This morning I was watching the local news and he came downstairs asking me why am I watching the news? He told me that I shouldn't trust the mainstream media and he used the exact term. He told me that he doesn't trust them after the PewDiePie situation and that I shouldn't either. He said to imagine what others things they lie about. The only thing that I've ever said to him on this topic is to always make sure to do his own research on the matters. Sounds like total BS, but I genuinely believe this. Why? Because PewDiePie has made tons of videos attacking the mainstream media on his main channel. PewDiePie has made videos in which he mocks the mainstream media and gives the middle finger at them. PewDiePie has said to his fans, the mainstream media is BS. This happens time and time again with media. They take they take someone popular like me and they run whatever story is going to get them more clicks and uh you know 
my name gets run in the ground. And a lot of these articles are saying like, we're still waiting for PewDiePie for a reply. We're still waiting for PewDiePie to respond to this hor horrific act that he has committed. I don't fucking need you. Wow, well, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely taken down. I have an audience. I can talk to them. You're, you're literally insignificant. And that's why you're pulling this shit, because I think you know it. If this is the kind of message that PewDiePie wants to utter to children, I would say go right ahead, man. Keep on red billing children everywhere, because mainstream media is fake news. And here we have crybabies pretending to be adults who complain about your jokes because not only it triggered their precious fifis, but it also because they're afraid that PewDiePie might be able to influence children in this way. <sighs> Let's continue on reading their desperate cry for help. People defend the antics of PewDiePie and his ilk by bringing up the other shock comedians like George Carlin and Howard Stern. Thing is, shock comedians usually have adult audiences. To reiterate a point made by game writer James Sterling earlier this week, they don't hold sway over millions of 10 year olds who may have been to the fray in the first place because they just wanted to watch someone play through Kim Kardashian Hollywood. I don't know why you think Jim Sterling is a good person to talk about this issue when his videos consist of him appearing as the Fuhrer. I mean, Jim Sterling made a really damn stupid blog with this really stupid analogy of Richard Gere. Imagine if Richard Gere publishing a YouTube video. <coughs> Should have done the Jim Sterling voice. Imagine Richard Gere publishing a YouTube video in which he had men hold a sign up reading death to all Jews and laughing because the men holding that sign didn't understand the English language. Imagine the reaction to that. Oh god, Jim Sterling, you idiot. That's not even a fair comparison because in reality, Richard Gere, or PewDiePie, didn't laugh at the people who had to sign death to all Jews. That didn't happen. Jesus Christ, you're making stuff up at this moment. So there's that, there's the begging coming from the mainstream media, there's the begging coming from the triggered snowflakes, there's a lot of begging from the people that YouTubers conform to whatever kinds of demands they ask. Please don't make offensive jokes, because if you make offensive jokes, we will get triggered by those offensive jokes, and if we get triggered, we will lose parts of our brains and our credibility will be destroyed, and if our credibility is destroyed, then we cannot control people. Is it not right, MSNBC? And it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our job. So today I'm going to ask YouTube, the old establishment, the old media, the mainstream media. I'm going to ask them personally, what is your end game? What is your motivation? What do you think will happen by the time you do all of these things? What do you think will happen by the time you police other people's content? What do you think will happen by the time you police other content creators? Like Sargon said on his video, why are we your enemy? Is it because we have access to more and more audiences? Are you jealous that PewDiePie is telling his 50 million subscribers to not trust the mainstream media? This entire thing is just Chloe from Life is Strange shouting, Gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. Fuck that. The mainstream media is good at playing dirty. The mainstream media is good at manipulating the narrative. But by the time they realize that there is something that can counter their narrative, they're gonna do whatever it takes to destroy it, including having companies to pull their ads off of them. Including slapping stupid algorithms that demonetize content creators. If YouTube genuinely wants to remove extremist content, they would have done more than to slap an algorithm that detects the word terrorist regardless of context, which happened to me in one of my videos. Like I said, stop using objective-based calculators to calculate subjective matters. If YouTube genuinely wants to solve this issue, they would actually have people to watch over people's content regardless whether or not there are like tons of them being put every hour. So thanks to this demonetization craze, the future is bleak for me and a lot of other YouTubers. My video might receive more and more demonetization threats, and that's gonna be terrible. I urge my viewers to go to my Patreon and donate just one dollar per month. For just one dollar per month, nothing more, nothing less, you'll get so many benefits. You can ask for specific videos, you can ask for opinions, you can have a chance to be in my live streams, or you can personally request to have a chat with me for a couple of hours or so. Also, for disclosure, 
I think I've shown to you that the money that I use on these YouTube videos have gone to upgrading my equipment and making my videos and productivity better and my life better. This is to the point where my parents don't have to pay for my college and my parents can spend their money on something else, like paying off some of the huge debts that they have. They don't even have to pay for my food or my internet. I can literally pay them myself thanks to doing these YouTube stuff. In fact, I'm gonna consider upgrading my internet for better live streams. For those of you who are in my last live stream, you might be aware of the painful endeavors that can come from it. Thanks with these YouTube videos, I can financially support myself. You're the guys who not only keeping me making videos, but also in some ways quite literally keeping me alive. So when I say this, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the support. Even if you can't support me financially, you can support me emotionally. I never had a chance to thank everybody who sent me comments, messages, or tweets recommending my channel or recommending my videos. I mean, I'm just a guy making stupid videos. These kinds of things have been emotionally delightful and you have no idea how just a couple of words of thank you or you're amazing or you rock or please go watch this guy. You have no idea how those can have an encouraging positive impact to me. So thanks for everyone who has been recommending me left and right. Thanks for anyone who sent me messages and tweet positive encouraging things to me. You don't have to do it. I don't force you to do it, but the fact that you do it anyway on your own will is even more rewarding for me. And there are those that take the higher steps of thanking me by drawing me fan arts. I, <laughs> I suck at drawing and you have no idea how much I love these fan arts. I've had people who draw me fan arts and it's very heartwarming and encouraging. This one that I got recently was done by Beetle. Thank you so much for the fan art, it looks so cute. These sorts of things help me emotionally. It keeps me sane, it keeps me delighted, it keeps a smile in my face. And another one is a huge thanks to Dice Warwick for the pledge on Patreon, you are amazing. Huge thanks to anyone who supported me on Patreon all this way. It's been a crazy ride on YouTube and we have more and more years to come and more and more challenges to face. Demonetization and companies pulling their ads off is just one battle. One challenge that I and a lot of other YouTubers have to face. Keep on fighting and never give up, guys. Apply whatever kind of teachings that anime has taught you and apply to them in real world. Make good use of them. Never give up. Believe it. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead, click the like button, and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me at Patreon. And thanks for watching.